Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. In the last video we made the hard skin for the new Oasis Cape Line 90, so that means today we're planting it of course. I'm super excited, can't wait to get started. Also this just came in, ah. big box full of healthy plants directly from the greenhouse from Dandelion Plants. So massive shout out to them and uh, massive thank you for always supporting me with my projects. Let's open this up, let's see what we got to work with today. We've got a lot of plants to work with guys. So my inspiration for this layout basically came from my tank from the 88 gallery in Japan. I saw a video about it on YouTube and I have a picture, I'll overlay the picture right now. So I tried to order as many yeah, sort of similar plants. Yeah, so we've got loads of dwarf hairgrass for the foreground, a couple pots of moss for the wood, uh, different types of crypts over here, some really nice anubias, uh, normal hairgrass, and then loads of stems. Got the Lutvigia super red, Hygrophila polysperma, and loads of rotalas as well so yeah this is going to be quite a challenge to prepare everything so let me just uh, get started right away okay so i think that was like roughly one hour of plant preparing condensed into like five or six seconds so definitely took some time but we got there in the end I still have a few pots left, we can always prepare more if we need it, but I think for now we've uh, got quite a lot already. So this looks really good, just loads of really healthy plants. I think the next step is to drain the tank and get started. Yeah, let's start draining the water. It's actually quite clear, yesterday it was uh, quite cloudy, so I did a small water change, but today the water is crystal clear, so that's good. The water is drained so we can begin planting. I'm going to start with the dwarf hair grass, of course in the foreground, but I also want to make a curve along uh, to, uh, towards the back. So we're going to have like a little curve over here, maybe a little bit in this section as well, but we'll have to see. Obviously this is going to take a long time. I have a lot of plants and a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to put on some music, do a time lapse on the camera and just enjoy the process. got a good amount of hair grass in already I'm probably gonna add more later but for now I want to move on to some crypts so the crypts are gonna go between the rocks and the wood and I'm probably gonna have some empty spaces after that and then I can fill it in with more hair grass okay, the first crypt going in is the Wendy TI compact I also used this one in the first layout of the big shallow and I really loved it there looks really good dark brown leaves I have three pots of this one and I'm thinking to just keep them I mean, I could split, up, split the pot up into smaller portions, but I'm actually just gonna keep these as it is. The second crypt going in is the crypt Becchetti. Becchetti, I don't know. Actually, I haven't used this one in a long time, so I don't think I've ever used it in a high-tech setup. So I'm curious to see how this one is going to develop. I'm gonna have three pots, so one, two, and then the final one is gonna go underneath here. I think that's a good spot for it. Slightly shaded, but should be okay. The third crypt was an in vitro pot, so it's still very small. And it's only gonna grow to about 10 centimeters, so it should stay slightly smaller than these two. So I'm gonna put it a little bit more in foreground. So over here, for example, we can put a portion underneath this piece of wood here. This next plant is a new favorite. Um, I like it a lot. It's Lagananda Mi Boldii Red. I have two pots for this. I'm only gonna plant it in one position. So it's gonna be like a nice focal point. I think a layout like this really needs some Anubias. So I've got some really nice Anubias Nana Bonsai. I've got five pots of this and I'm gonna to try to wedge it in between the cracks of the wood and the rocks. Okay, so I've used a lot of dwarf hair grass in the foreground and to the side. I've also ordered a few pots of the longer, the normal hair grass. And I'm gonna use this basically over here and also on the left side over there, just behind or just next to the dwarf hair grass. And this is hopefully going to accentuate that triangular composition. I 
think it's starting to look really good. So we can now fill in the rest of the areas with more dwarf hair grass. So we still have an empty patch over there, some more empty patches, you know, along the front here. And then we can move on to the background, I guess. Okay, moving on to the background. I was planning to have well, four different stem plants in the background, but I think something went wrong with the order because I'm missing one stem plant. It's no big deal though. We can just uh, add it later. Yeah, the plan was to start in the corner with the Hygrophila polysperma, then move on to a red one, uh, move on to a slightly orange stem plant, and then finish with a green one again. So we have green, red, orange, green, and then the green carpet. So still the plan, but um, yeah, I just have to wait for the other stem plant. So yeah, first one going in, Hygrophila polysperma. Uh, this is, yeah, I think it's probably one of the most popular aquarium plants. Very, very fast growing as well. So it's gonna be interesting to see if I can manage to uh, keep it, yeah, main, um, maintain it properly, keep it trimmed, or if it's just gonna take over too fast, but we'll see. Hopefully with a nice lean dosing routine, it will not be too fast. Moving on to the Ludwigia Palustris Super Red. Probably one of my favorite red stem plants. Okay, and then the third stem plant is the Rotala Rotundifolia Laos. Really like, like this one. Quite an easy plant as well. It's going to be like a nice orange, orange color to the leaves. Okay, it's a background planted as well. I'm wondering if up until this point, some of you have wondered where are the jar ferns? Like surely you must be using jar ferns in this layout, right? You're absolutely right. But I got the jar ferns right here. These are my jar ferns. Let me just explain. Um, I had a lot of jar fern in my 70 liter capers tank and I'm planning to take the tank down, uh, replace it with something else. But of course I didn't want to throw away the jar ferns. I wanted to use them in here, but I made a mistake in the tank by mixing two different types of java ferns. I thought it would look natural, but actually I didn't really like it. So I used uh, Trident and the Mini. So I wanted to, to separate them, but of course very difficult. Everything is grown together and intertwined. So I separated the Trident and basically cut out, cut off all the leaves and just uh, bunched a few rhizomes together. I'm going to use it in this tank. Of course, you're not going to see it in the first week to two weeks, but Surely after a month, we're going to start seeing new growth and it's going to look very good in a, in a little bit of time. Okay, so I've got three of these Trident Java Fern rhizome bunches. Hopefully it stays that way. Maybe we'll add a drop of super glue. I'm thinking one in the center here, maybe. Let's do another one on this side as well. And just like this layout can't be without Java Ferns, I think it also can't be without moss. So I was thinking a lot about how to apply this, if I'm going to tie it or if I'm going to glue it, but Tying it is very difficult, especially because the hardscape is already in place. So I'm just going to glue a little bit of moss to some branches and then call it a day. And it is now the next day. Things are looking good. We had a few stem plant bunches that floated to the surface, but we can fix it in a minute. Uh, last night I also swapped the light around, so we now have the cable on the left side, so it's yeah, kind of a little bit more neat over here. And on this side we have just a completely clear view, you know, so really enjoying that. Now there's a few things that we still need to do today to make sure that this tank gets the best possible start, you know, with the best possible plant growth and the least amount of problems. I've already put the light on a timer, so I'm going for eight hours and I think it's roughly 50% intensity. Um, we still need to uh, add the CO2. Of course, this is a high-tech setup, so we need to get the CO2 going. Uh, we need to do water changes because we've used aquasol as a substrate. We need to do quite a lot of water changes, so 
I'm going to be doing like 50% every day for the first week and every other day for the second week and so on and so on. Uh, besides that, yeah, I need to add some beneficial bacteria to the setup. And oh, there's one more thing that I want to do that I've actually never done before, but you guys are going to see that in a minute. Okay, so I'm currently draining the tank. Now to make sure that everybody understands why we need to do these water changes, I just did a water test for ammonia. And as you can see, it's light green. This is supposed to be yellow. Right now we have an ammonia level of one milligram per liter, which is quite a lot considering that I only filled this tank up yesterday late at night and it's now like quite early in the morning. So just imagine if you don't do water changes for a couple of days, you know? So yeah, water changes uh, once per day for the first week, every other day for the second week, every second day for the third week and so on and so on. Uh, next up, let's replant those floating bunches. Okay, plants are replanted. Now while the tank is still draining, we can also start working on the CO2 system. On the Big Shallow, I was using a inline CO2 reactor. But I think in this tank, I'm just gonna go for a simple CO2 diffuser. I got one from Aquario. Uh, this is one of those CO2 diffusers that you kind of like need to model yourself, but I'll show you. Yeah, so you basically get this very long CO2 diffuser with a very long acrylic pipe. And then I think actually in this tank, it could just work like this, but it's a little bit too close to the substrate. Not sure if that's gonna work. So because this is acry acrylic, we can heat it up and then we can actually bend it ourselves. So we can just give it a nice U shape. So it just hangs over the glass. And then in the box, they also give you two test tubes. So you can basically uh, practice and also some um, like a little rubber band. So you, you actually add this inside the tube, just like so. And then if you warm it up and you bend it, it, it doesn't collapse. You know, it actually forms a nice shape. So let's do a little test run. Okay, got a little candle here. I'm just gonna start, slowly start moving it above the flame. You don't want it directly in the flame because then you actually blacken the acrylic. We still want it to stay nice and transparent. But I'm just twisting it until it starts to become very soft, which is already happening now. It's a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, I think that's enough. Here we go, so now we have a decent bend. Not great, but not bad for the first try. Second try, I'm twisting the tube and I'm also moving it side to side. So we warm up a, yeah, quite a large area. Okay, second try was a little bit better. Okay, let's go for the real deal. All right, that actually was quite easy. So now the CO2 diffuser is at a good height from the substrate. And then here we have a nice bend. So now we can remove the rubber tubing on the rubber band, and then attach the uh, CO2 tubing. For that I bought one of those fancy uh, ADA clear part set, so you get a little bit of CO2 tubing and a bunch of suction cups and a check valve. So, I mean, this is 10 euros, it's actually not too bad, but this looks really good, you know? CO2 is working, bubble counter installed. I love those shiny things, you know, it just looks really cool. So the tubing goes in the cabinet on the back side. And then over here we have the CO2 bottle with the CO2 regulator just behind the filter. Okay, so that's done. I'm also filling the tank back up again. And uh, there was a little bit more than the 50% water change, but it doesn't matter. Just if you just do big water changes, then you're fine. I'm also just using tap water, by the way. I'm not using RO water. Actually, most of my tanks have tap water, just a few of them have RO, but if I would have to use RO in this tank, that would be uh, an insane amount. So, no, just tap water. And this whole return pump situation, uh, this thing right here is just an old filter inlet from a JBL filter. Attached to that, I have a long garden hose. This hose goes to the kitchen, and in the kitchen I have a, a pump in my sink. So that's just pumping the water right in. Straight from the tap, um, I don't have to dechlorinate the water. I'm just trying to sort of match the temperatures to what the temperature is in the tank. I'm using a heater already. The heater is, heater is set to 20, 23 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I think that's it. Let's move on to the next step. Next step is actually adding a few more plants. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you guys a picture that was the inspiration for this tank, and a tank from the ADA gallery. And in that picture, they also had these, this really long grass. That's what I wanted in this tank as well, but there's not really many options 
for that. I mean, of course, you could go for uh, Jungle Vel or like Valisneria, but Valisneria can really easily like spread everywhere and take over. Other options would be um, Cypress Hell Fairy. I have some in the 70 Dutch Capers tank, but I know I have used a, used a plant a couple of times already. I'm not a huge fan. So I wanted something that looks very similar, and I, I think I found it. It's a bit of a rare plant. It's called Eriokaulon species Japan needle leaf. I haven't, I haven't seen it for sale anywhere else, but I bought this in Aquasabi. It's a German online store. I'll leave a link in the video description. And this should be a, quite an easy plant and should grow really this really long grass. So super excited about this one. And then I bought another one, of course, the Ludwigia brevi Bess. Looks a little bit like Ludwigia arcuata, but this should be easier to grow. So curious about this one as well. So let's add these two in and then um, Move on to the next step. Okay, so I basically have three of those, three plants from the Eriokaulon in that little in vitro pot. So I'm going to do one all the way on the left. Let's see, should we do another one over here? And on the website, it actually said that this could grow as an epiphyte as well. So that's pretty interesting. I'm actually going to do another one all the way, all the way on the left. I think that's the best spot for it. And then the second plant, the Ludwigia brevibes, I'm going to plant this in front of the Ludwigia super red. This one should also turn like reddish orangey, so we have a nice, just a red focal point on this side of the aquarium. So now that we've installed the CO2 system, it's also very important to add a CO2 drop checker, just so we know if we're, we're injecting the correct amount of CO2. So I'm going to add this on the opposite side of the CO2 diffuser. So I'm just going to add it here next to the... CO2 on SOD filter outflow, just like so. And hopefully within a few hours, this will turn nice and green. Okay, water change is done. We've added the plants, we've added the CO2. I mentioned earlier that I want to add something that I've never done before. That's actually to add an air pump. I want to run an air pump on this tank at night. And basically I want to increase the oxygen levels at night. So what happens during the day is we inject a lot of CO2 and that helps, to help, that helps the plants to grow and the plants will produce oxygen. But at night, the plants actually take in oxygen so at night, the oxygen levels kind of drop a little bit. And that's not really good for the beneficial bacteria in this tank because they need a lot of oxygen as well. And of course, the fish, later on, we're going to add fish. We want to make sure that they get a lot of oxygen. So yeah, I want to run an air pump at night. And the idea for this basically came from the ADA gallery in Japan. Because over there, what happens at night, once, or once, the lights, once the lights turn off, they actually raise the lily pipe outflow. So then they get more surface agitation and then they bring in more oxygen in the gram. But I don't want to be like moving the lily pipe up and down every single day so i'm gonna try an air pump okay so we got an air pump this one is uh, supposed to be super silent and i just tested it and it really is uh, we've got some tubing we've got an air stone and we've got a check valve now i'm not going to be using this air stone i'm actually going to use something else i got myself an air diffuser also from aquario very similar to the co2 diffuser and this one is supposed to make the air bubbles very fine as well because with a normal air stone once the bubbles rise up to the surface, they kind of splash a lot of water. That's what I want to avoid. So hopefully with this air diffuser, we're not going to have that issue. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just bought this with my own money. So yeah, let's just test it out. So the air diffuser actually has a green ceramic disc. Very interesting. I'm going to place it in the back left corner, right? Because I don't really want to see it too much. But I'm thinking we just do a little test run first where we can see it properly. So let's just add it here, connect it to the pump and then see how it works. Here we go. Definitely very small bubbles. <laughs> Quite impressed with that. Over here I have the pump. And well, I can't hear it. I only hear the filter humming. So yeah, I'll leave a link for this in the video description as well if you want to pick one up. Yeah, so I'm going to place it here in the back left corner. And then I'm going to put the pump on a timer. I'm thinking to just have it come on as soon as the light turns off. And then stop as soon as the CO2 turns on basically. So. Yeah, quite, quite long, but it doesn't really consume a lot of electricity, so that's fine. If you are going to be doing the same thing, make sure that you do add that check valve, because if once it turns off, water can start flowing back into the system, and it can actually drain your tank quite a bit, so you want to make sure you avoid that. So I think we're basically almost done, and now we just need to wait for this tank to get cycled, so we can add in a fish. Super excited about that. To make sure that we can add in a fish rather quickly, I'm going to add some beneficial bacteria. So here I have Seacum Stability. These are just beneficial bacteria in a bottle. And we can just add a little bit to the water column. We don't need much. And hopefully then 
they will start colonizing in the substrate and in the filter and yeah, just help speed up the cycling process. Of course, you need to make sure the plants start growing as well. And for that, I'm going to add some fertilizer. Now, we already have quite a lot of nutrients in the substrate, so we don't really need a lot of fertilizer. So I'm going to start dosing the APT0. And this is basically just micronutrients and potassium because the substrate will mostly release uh, some nitrate and some phosphate, but not really like potassium and micronutrients and iron, stuff like that. So I'm going to st start dosing this. The recommended dosage is 3 milliliters per 100 liters daily. This tank is 180 liters, but I mean, it's still, yeah, I mean, the tank, the, the plants still need to establish and start growing. So we don't need a full dose yet, I'm, I'm thinking. So I'm probably just start with half a dose. Alright guys, I think that's it. Hopefully that's enough to make sure this aquarium gets a uh, flying start and we don't run into any issues. So I'm going to keep the light on a timer for 8 hours per day, roughly 50% intensity. Um, I'm thinking from 1pm till 9pm. And uh, the CO2 is going to go on a timer as well from 11am until 8pm. Uh, then the air pump on a timer, so that's going to be from 9pm uh, until 9 p.m. until 10 a.m. in the morning, something like that. And then, yeah, just the daily water changes for the first week. A little bit of beneficial bacteria every single day for the first week or so. And then hopefully we can add in the fish soon. Guys, let me know in the comments what kind of fish you would like to see in here. I think that's the end of the video. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to smash that like button. I'll see you next time.